Hello there, this is Glenn Berry with Dr. DMV LLC, and I'm back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to flash the BIOS on an MSI MEG B550 Unify X motherboard, even if you don't have a CPU installed. And you might be wondering, why would I ever want to do that? Well, the main reason is if you have an older BIOS version on your motherboard when it came from the factory that doesn't support a CPU that you're trying to use. And a prime example of this is a Ryzen 5000 series CPU or the upcoming Ryzen 5000 series APUs, the Cezanne APUs. So if you have either one of those two types of processors, it's very likely that if you assemble your system, it's not going to post and you're going to have to flash the BIOS before you can use it. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do in this video. So when you go to the MSI website for your motherboard, you're going to find something like this on the overview page. And you want to make sure that you're going to the right page for your motherboard. A lot of people make mistakes and go to something similar, but not the exact model number that they have. And once you get to the overview page, then what you're going to want to do is go to the support page. And the support page is right here. And they have different sections on the support page. And what I'm going to do first is go to the compatibility page. And this shows you all the different processors that this motherboard supports. So for example, if you have a Ryzen 5000 or 5700G APU, like you show see right here, you need this new beta BIOS that just came out today in order for this to work with this particular motherboard. And if you have an older processor that may or may not work, you can check it on this compatibility page. So once you've figured out for sure what version of the BIOS you're going to need, then you want to make sure you go and download that one or newer. Then you want to go to the download page and make sure you're on the BIOS tab and you can see all the different BIOS versions that have been released. And the latest one as of the day of this recording is right here, this new beta version. And I know some people are nervous about using beta version BIOSes, and if you're uncomfortable with that, just don't do it. But if I want to get my new Cezanne APU working with this motherboard, I have to use this version. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to download this new beta version BIOS. Here are the key steps to using the BIOS flash button on an MSI motherboard. I'm not going to read all these steps to you. You can pause the video and read them at your leisure, but this is every single step that you're going to have to do, and this is a handy checklist to have. Before we go any further, I want to quickly go over the page in the motherboard manual that documents this particular process. It's at the bottom of page 59 right here, and you can see that they list six steps for going through the process. And I'm not going to read them to you. You can pause the video and take a look at this, but this is the documentation that MSI provides for this procedure. I also want to show you in the manual where it talks about the rear I.O. panel and the right button to push and the right USB port to plug your USB drive into. And we'll talk about this more later, but right here on page 24, there's a flash BIOS button on the bottom left and then a flash BIOS USB port right next to that. So that's important that you know where that's located. After you download the BIOS file, you need to find it on your system. By default on Windows, it should be in your downloads folder. And right here is my zip file that I just downloaded. And the first thing I need to do is right click on that and pick extract all. And that's going to extract this to another directory in my downloads folder. So here it is right there. And we can open that up and take a look at it. And what you'll find inside is that is the actual BIOS file. And you need to rename that. It's really important you rename it to msi.rom. So msi.rom. ROM and then get rid of the existing three name file extension. And when you do that, you'll get a warning from Windows and you can go ahead and click yes. And that's what you need to do for that particular file. And then after that, you need to have a USB flash drive ready to go. And it should be a USB 2.0, not a 3.0 or 3.1. It needs to be 2.0 and small capacity, 16 gigabyte or smaller, seems to work the best. And once you have one of those ready to go, the first thing you should do is right click on it and check the properties of it 
and see whether it's been formatted in FAT32 or some other file system. It has to be FAT32. So if it's formatted with NTFS, for example, you have to reformat it in FAT32. That's extremely important. If you don't do that, this procedure will not work. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of that since I'm already good to go. And then the next step is you've gotta copy this msi.rom file that you renamed down to the root of that USB drive. And what I mean by the root is it's not in a folder or directory. So notice that I've got a folder right here. And if I copy that inside of the folder, this will not work. It has to be in the root. So some people don't understand what the root of the drive means. So hopefully that explains it is at the top level of the drive, not inside a folder or directory. Here's the motherboard mounted on the test bench. And that's a 24 pin connector and that's the eight pin connector. And what you need to do is plug in just one eight pin connector. You don't need both of them for this. And then you also need to plug in the 24 pin connector right there. And if you don't have a test bench, this works just fine on top of your motherboard box or any non-conductive surface. That's all that really matters. So here's how it looks with my test bench. The next step is to plug your power supply into the wall or a UPS and then turn on the switch if it has one. Good quality power supplies typically do have switches like you see right here. Here's the rear I.O. panel and right there is the port you're going to plug in the USB drive to and that's the button that you're going to push. So now the next step is to put the USB drive into that correct port that's labeled Flash BIOS. And then you just press the button and you hold it down for two to three seconds. That's all you need to hold it down for and then release it. And what you should see is that BIOS flash in the center that is flashing. And then if you have an LED on your USB drive, that'll probably be flashing and nothing else really matters as far as what's flashing or not flashing. The one you want to look at is the flash BIOS button and that BIOS a uh, thing that's flashing in the center. That's what you want to watch. And when that stops flashing after five to six minutes, it's done. And that's the only way to know for sure that it's done. Whether or not the system shuts off or any other lights flash aren't really that important, to be honest. Here's another angle of the BIOS flash button flashing during the procedure. And then here's another angle that shows the CPU debug light should be turned on. That's normal. So it's right there at the bottom. And then up here is the USB drive flashing and that will flash intermittently. So whether or not that's flashing is not as important. After five to six minutes, the BIOS flash button should stop flashing and that's how you know it's done. So your next step is to turn off the power supply button. And then after that, if you're going to be assembling your system, you want to unplug the power supply cables. So that's the next step shown right here. So you unplug the 8-pin EPS cable and you unplug the 24-pin main power supply cable. So now the system is completely safe to work on and you can assemble it and put it together and make sure whether it posts or not. That's the final test to see if it worked. Finally, I want to cover some frequently asked questions. The first one is, can I do this with a fully assembled system? And the answer is yes, you can. It's just important that you don't turn on the system with the case power button. Instead, just follow the directions in the video. You don't want the system running normally when you try to do this. The second one is, do I need to do this if I have a Ryzen 3000 series processor? And the answer is no, you don't. It's a lot easier to use the regular MSI M flash feature inside of the BIOS if your system will already post. Another question I get a lot is, is it safe to use a beta BIOS version for this? I think it is, but if you're nervous about it, then don't use a beta BIOS version. Finally, a question that I get a lot is, a variation of I've tried this and it doesn't work. What do I do? Well, most of the time it's a problem with your USB flash drive. Especially for MSI motherboards, it's really important that it's a USB 2.0 drive, not a 3.0 or 3.1. And it's also important that it's a small capacity drive, 16 gigabytes or less. 
But no matter what has happened, if you can't get this to work, leave a comment that describes what you did and what you see happening when you try to do the procedure. Don't just say it didn't work because I can't really help you if that's all you tell me. And then make sure that you've watched the entire video and that you followed all the directions exactly because this procedure is really simple-minded. It doesn't have any intelligence built in to allow for any mistakes you might have made. So if you decide to put the USB drive in the wrong port, it's not gonna work. Or if you put the BIOS flash file in a directory instead of the root of the, fi of the drive, it's just not gonna work. So it's very picky about following the directions exactly. So I want to thank you for watching this video and please leave any comments if you have questions. Thanks a lot. This is Glenn Berry with Dr. DMV LLC and I want to thank you for watching this video. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. And finally, if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe because that really helps the channel out. Really? <laughs> you have a lot to say.